Hello, con folks out there. You're watching another episode of Listen in 3D. This is episode number 54. I'm your boy Justin, aka Too Tall for You Fool. And I'm Netta, aka Wondrous Net. And together we are both Team 3D, the host of Listen in 3D, where we discuss, dissect, and debate the music and the albums in the world of hip hop and other genres. Like what you're seeing, give us a like, share this uh, podcast around, uh, comment. Any feedback is much appreciated, and subscribe if you want to help us out one step further. When you do subscribe, click on that notification bell. That way you know when all our videos go live. So that, that way you're never missing a beat. So, yeah, just help us out there. And then just a friendly reminder, I know I haven't said this in a while. If you want to contact the show, email us or anything, listen in 3D at gmail.com. All our info stuff is on our main uh, page. Not only for this video, but the main page as well. Just if you want to contact us or follow us on any of our socials. All right. So this one. So I'm, I'm a little curious. I mean, I know you probably know a lot more about this album than I do. You know, I've heard, you know, the more popular songs off it. But I'm just a little curious before we get into it. How did you get into this project in terms of this? You know, like, do you remember like where you were or... <laughs> Um, I think by 2010, I, Nikki was already kind of a household name and to me, like mm -hmm. amongst my friends and stuff. So yeah, I, I was, I was ready for it by then. She had multiple beefs in early <laughs> 2010s. I was, and she was working with Young Money already at the time. She had did a Young Money album. She had did songs with Drake already. So I, I was ready for it. You were ready for it. All right. Are they ready for this? Uh, tell them. What are we doing today? So today we'll be reviewing Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday. It was her debut studio album. It was released on November 22nd, 2010. It was certified three times platinum. It peaked at number one on the R&B and hip hop album charts and number one on the Billboard 200. It had singles including Your Love, Check It Out, Right Through Me, Moment for Life, Did It On Them, and Fly. And she had a music video for all of the singles. There were guest appearances from Eminem, Rihanna, Will I Am, Kanye West, Drake, and Natasha Bedingfield. All right, thank you for that. So, yeah, I'm looking at the release date, and when I get into recommendations later, we'll get a little more into that. November, November in 2010 was a star-studded month. If you go back into your music history. Um, but yeah, just uh, for the most part, uh, Nicki Minaj, just a little bit of background info on her, you know, uh, she, uh, you know, she is, you know, dubbed as the queen of rap, you know, she is from, uh, where was she born? Da, 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 da. Trinidad. Yeah, Trinidad. Yeah, Trinidad. And then she came to the U.S. later on. Uh, when she got to the U.S., she had a lot of odd jobs, you know, got fired from many of them, one of those jobs, including Red Lobster. Uh, but in the mid to late 2000s, you know, she had mic tapes floating around and, you know, eventually, like uh, Netta was saying, got got some beefs, got with Young Money, and bottom line was a household name before her real debut album even dropped. I you could consider it her third album, but, you know, mixtapes really don't count in the, in the world of music. So. <laughs> so, but, I mean, she she pretty much, I mean, I've heard some of the mixtapes, not not all the songs, but I know she does go pretty hard on them. So, and then, you know, other ventures she's done, you know, she is an actor. Um, you know, she's done voice acting, Ice Age, Angry Birds 2. You know, she's been in Barbershop, The Next Cut, The Other Woman. You know, she was um, an American Idol as well. And then um, she has a lot of accolades to her name, too. She has 12 BET Awards, 8 MTV Video Music Awards, 5 Billboard Music Awards, uh, 9 American Music Awards, and 3 Guinness World Records. Uh, she has received 12 Grammy Award nominations. Uh, in 2016, uh, Time included her on their annual list of 100 Most Influential People in the World. Uh, throughout uh, Minaj's career, uh, outspoken views, feuds, and with several rappers of her personal life and her fan base have received significant controversy. So, uh, just you know, a little bit of uh, you know, background on her. Anything you'd like to add uh, to her background or anything you'd like to share? Um, I guess I'll 
guess I could just share the the story of how she met Lil Wayne. Mm-hmm. Um, she was she was working with a guy who was kind of managing her, who was doing some DVDs called the, the Come Up DVDs, mm-hmm. and they strategically placed uh, Nikki's uh, song right after Lil Wayne's song on the DVD, so that he <laughs> would see it. And he saw it, and he and he called her right up, and. The rest was kind of history from there. Uh, that that manager wasn't so happy after she kind of <laughs> dipped out on him, but you know the the rest was really history from there. And yeah, she had a a few mixtapes before she ever came out with this mm. album, and uh, she really uh, came in swinging. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I was already adult by the time this album came out, so I had like no like childhood attachment to Nicki Minaj or anything. The only thing I could say is that she was definitely influenced by the female MCs that came before her, and she has definitely had an influence on current um, female MCs today. Maybe not all of them, but, you know, quite a bit of them. I I know she does have influence on it. The one, obviously, she takes the most from, at least the ones that influenced her, definitely Little Kim. (laughs) <laughs> with the hairstyles and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's kind of obvious, but you know, that def definitely, you know, she 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 does her own thing. She doesn't bite anyone. I I don't feel like she does anyway, but you know, she's she's just one one strong rapper to not be messed with, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right. So, any pre-listening thoughts going into this one? I know you were ready for it. um did you have any more back then or before we did this for the, for the podcast really, or. <laughs> um, sure. I, I, I think the first time I heard of her was probably like, Oh, eight, Oh nine. I was like mm-hmm. 18, 19. My, my college roommate freshman year, she, she was listening to her and I just never, I never really got into it until I heard this, this one song called the, the baddest B from her uh, second mixtape, uh-huh. Sucker Free. I'm like, who is that? And I, I just really, really love that song. And I got into all of her music from there. And um, it seems like her and Drake were kind of on like a pre- parallel mm-hmm. uh, tra- trajectory because they came out and blew up kind of. Kind of the same time, yeah. Just, mm-hmm, yeah, because Take Care, didn't that come out like shortly thereafter or something like that? Yeah, definitely somewhere. It might have been. It might have been before, but it was definitely before. around that time. Yeah, I know. And, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, by the time she came out with this, like I don't know. It, at that time, it didn't feel like a day. De- it didn't feel like a debut album. It just felt like, yeah. well, Nicki Minaj dropping more music. Yeah, yeah, just people were ready for it. I mean, as for me, you know, I've just heard. I've heard her music over the years. I still hear it pretty frequently, you know, and. I'm out and about and stuff like that, you know, just, she definitely made some great hits and, you know, timeless music, timeless music's always, you know, good thing. And, you know, she was pretty hard, you know, 14 years ago. And I would say she hasn't missed a beat, if you know what I mean. I could be wrong, but I I don't know. But, (laughs) so, uh, but yeah, so anyway, let's get into uh, the artwork of the album pretty i don't know basic well it's pink pink and white pink hair pink boots white dress her <laughs> i mean I, i've seen i wish you could just get up a little closer i, I wouldn't have, i don't want to have to zoom in but it, i mean it, it's 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 okay i guess um i don't think it's the best cover we've seen we should actually do an episode on the best album covers we've seen so far, but <laughs> <laughs> best and the um, worst. Best. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have to agree that I I don't know if this was my favorite album cover from her. I thought it was very like neat, neatly put together. It was very it was neat. Pink. It was very pink. Uh, I thought she was trying to give like the Barbie aesthetic with the the way that the legs are so elongated and they're kind of contorted in a strange position it almost looks like there's a child who's been like playing with a barbie doll Mm. and and she just propped her up that way you know when you you play with barbies you kind of just prop them up in random places doing random stuff and that's that's kind (laughs) of what i get when i look at this album cover and um i don't don't know if she was best served debut album by this album cover but i honestly like to know more of her thinking behind it 
Yeah, same. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not sure if it's a Barbie doll toy or if it's her just with like a little bit of like Photoshop mixed in or something. I yeah, no no idea there. It it's <laughs> Yeah. Her, her facial expression is just this blank stare too. I'm like, <laughs> well, why why is she doing that? But <laughs> it's a very interesting album cover. Yeah, yeah, def- definitely. All right, so let's get into uh, beats. Uh, I'll let you go first on the beats. My favorite one was uh, Here I Am. It had this part. I don't know if it was a piano or a guitar or what the heck it was, but it was like... And I just I just really liked it. It felt like majestic or something. Well, where did you land on beats? Uh, for me, uh, your love, uh, I think was a good beat. And then there was also this, uh, other beat that I forget the song. I mean, it kind of, maybe it was here. I am. I know. I know it went into like a couple beat changes. I should have, cause I was looking at, um, uh, through who sampled yesterday. Let me, let me look it up real quick. I think that was it. If, if I. Yeah. It's and, not always easy to remember yeah. the beat when you're, when you're not <laughs> hearing it. Like, yeah, I should I should have marked it down, but then I restarted my computer. Let me check my history real quick uh, for the beat. And then also the one, Roman's Revenge. I thought that, I thought that was a pretty good beat also, uh, that, the song that she did with Eminem. And, but yeah, Your Love. And actually, it could have been checking it out. Let me, let me go here, go to... History. Oh yeah, but the one with Will I Am, it was a pretty good beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was actually Save Me. It was a I think you know it was not fly. Actually, it could have been. Actually, maybe it was fly. Let me I'm on whosample.com folks. I just I really just wanna check out the sample that I <laughs> that I saw real quick. Uh <laughs> Let's see. Uh, actually, you know what? I know better yet. Because it was a famous beat. I know I usually don't spend this much time with beats, but. <laughs> uh, all right. So there is a song um, by James Brown. You've probably heard of it. It's called Funky Drummer. And it. Uh, <laughs> It had this uh, beat a few episodes back. We actually, uh, it was actually on most of a mathematics song, but okay, I found it. It's a uh, save me. Oh, yeah, okay. that 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 beat. <laughs> and you want to know something? Um, a very famous cartoon show uh, sampled those drums in that beat. Want to take a wild guess? I think it's one that you may have watched, maybe. I'll give you a hint. It was on the Cartoon Network. Man, I have no clue. Really? You didn't watch the Powerpuff Girls growing up? Yeah, I watched the Powerpuff Girls. You remember the theme song that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also samples that same... So if you listen to Save Me, it's that same drums that they used in... Yeah, they sampled it in the Powerpuff Girls as well. Wow. Which... It's very unusual because you usually don't see a TV theme song being sampled but from another song. Well, maybe you do sometimes, but mostly it's the other way around that, you know, in hip hop, they'll sample like the theme or something. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So yeah, that, that beat really got me too. Well, it wasn't one of my favorite songs, but I was just like, what is that beat? Yeah, so see, yeah, Save Me, that was... <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. The Powerpuff Girls... Uh, song is so upbeat and save me is more like if from what yeah. i remember yeah. just like listen to those slow. yeah just yeah. You, yeah just listen to those drums like if maybe after the podcast or when you get some time later just listen to the drums you'll be like and then listen to the power of up girls theme, just like oh yeah <laughs> and then listen to james brown funky drummer i got a request that they wanted uh, one, one of our list, listeners or viewers wanted us to start Shouting out some more of these samples. So James Brown, Funky Drummer. Yeah, listen to that one. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I, I just had to shout out that beat. It was it was it was going to kill me the whole episode if I didn't. So thank you for bearing <laughs> with me, folks. 
All right, so let's discuss the singles. There was a lot of singles, but we decided on the three best ones. The three best, well, yeah, the three most popular ones. And so that was uh, Did It On Them, Belie, and Moment for Life. So we're going to discuss those three. Let's start with Did It On Them, or should it have just been called Shit It On Them? I don't know, I don't know, but I was a little confused, but um, I'll let you go ahead and get started here. What, what were your thoughts? Um, yes, I believe this was the, oh no, this wasn't the first, I think this was one of the first songs on the album, but third. I thought, it, oh, the third, um, I thought it was a pretty good song. I didn't know until I was just looking into it that the the hype I guess there's like a kind of a hype man on the al- album who's saying just crazy stuff behind her. Yeah. That was an earthquake, bitch, and oh. I didn't know that was her <laughs> her ex so Safari that was saying it. I thought it was like mm-hmm. Big Frida or somebody along those lines, but this is her her ex Safari saying all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, but it, it was a pretty pretty good song. It was probably my least favorite single. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fair. What did you think? Um, it was interesting song, you know, definitely, um, put your number twos in the air, shit it on them. I just shit it on them. Like <laughs> I see, I see where Ice Spice gets her poop slash fart material, I guess, but <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call it that, um, I did, you know, definitely all these, uh, bitches is my sons, you know, definitely talking about the sons and then. Verse three, she starts it again. All these bitches is my sons, and I ain't talking about Phoenix. I thought it was pretty cool too, because the music video I don't think was much to look at. Um, there was just a bunch of concert footage, but um, I thought it was pretty ironic how, like, when Phoenix comes up, you see Steve Nash if you watch the music video for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and I, is that a is that a wrestler? I don't know, Steve Nash, Steve Nash on from the Phoenix Suns, the NBA player, oh. the NBA. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but, I thought you watched basketball. <laughs> I, I watched like LeBron, really. Oh, but uh, <laughs> the uh, yeah, the music video. I she at least she had uh, Drake in there carrying her yeah. on his back, and he's singing her lyrics. And he, she had Lil Wayne in there. She had on like some wild and crazy <laughs> outfits, as she was known for. Back the, dil- then, so. the dildo was a little crazy too. Or oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me shake it off. Yeah, yeah, no, crazy. yeah, yeah. Like, it was on, yeah, verse two, I believe. Yeah, just she said, yeah, like, yeah, I'll start pissing. Oh, no, no, first, if I had a dick, I would pull it out and piss on it. Yeah, that, I thought that was a little crazy with a dildo. But. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was an interesting song. I wouldn't say it was my least favorite single, but. It, it was interesting to say the least. <laughs> interesting video too, with just having a bunch of contra footage. So let's go to Fly, um, featuring Rihanna. I thought uh, I thought they did a pretty good duet here. I thought you know, uh, Rihanna kicks it off. I came to win, to fight, to conquer, thrive, and then you know, uh, Nikki just takes it from there. I thought the music video was pretty interesting. You know, definitely like their their outfits in the video. Uh, lyrically, nothing much was going on for me there, but I thought I just thought they both you know clicked together, did a you know pretty good job. Um, your thoughts on um, Fly? Yeah, so I, I like this song. This was probably my favorite single. Mm-hmm. Um, I like how she's she's kind of just talking about her her. Uh, coming really reaching the pinnacle of her success she says they they start coming and i start rising must be surprising i'm just surmising i win thrive floor sight soar higher higher more fire (laughs) Uh, so i like that i like how she's talking about people stereotyping her and trying to typecast her everybody want to try to box me in suffocating every time it locks me in painting their own pictures then they crop me in but i will remain where the top begin mm-hmm. and uh i like when she's talking about the beefs i think she's talking about the beefs here because in this year she had uh beefs with lil kim she had beef with this other girl named keys and yeah. they were just <laughs> going at her all the time and she says <laughs> i hear the criticism loud and clear that is how i know that the time is near see we become alive in a time of fear and i ain't got no mother effing time to spare mm. so I, I really like that and 
the very end when she says uh, she's talking about just conquering everything. And she says, cry my eyes out for days upon days, such a heavy burden placed upon me. But when you go hard, your nays become yays. Yankee stadiums with Jays and Kanye's. And I thought yeah. like that was oh, yeah, that, when she when that she did hard. that song Monster <laughs> with uh with Kanye and Jay Z. Well, she stole the show. Crazy. She stole the she stole the show on that song. Yeah. She she definitely did yeah. steal the show. I don't care what anyone says. They probably should have put that song Kanye. on her. Yeah, they probably should have put that song on her album. That that's <laughs> yeah. Even even Kanye, the ultimate egomaniac, was like, yeah, you know, Nikki ate us up on this song, and it it, it was crazy and to me that was like really the the height of mm. that was really her prime when when that when that came out so yeah. i love that that line um i like the the video like you said the outfits were cool, cool. i really like Nick, nikki actually had some cheetah print hair and i was yeah. like wow that, that's <laughs> awesome and uh i like you know throughout the video they're walking through the carnage but at the yeah. end the sun comes out and the flowers start blooming so I thought it was a really good video. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a great video. Definitely one of the better videos of and she had a lot of videos, even on on the X six, uh, even on the complete edition, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, let's uh, go on to uh, the final single we'll discuss before we get into our favorites, and that is "Moment for Life." Um, so with this, I will say she and Drake did a fabulous job, um, you know, doing it together. Um, it, I mean, after this whole Kendrick Drake beef, it's kind of hard for me to look at Drake <laughs> the same way now, I guess. But I mean, when you listen to his older stuff, he did a really good job here, you know. Um, let's see, where do I start? Um, uh, let's see, uh, Young Money raised me. Grew up out in Baisley, Southside, Jamaica, Queens is crazy because I'm still hood. Hollywood couldn't change me. Shout out to my haters. Sorry that you couldn't phase me. I thought she did a really good job there. You know, definitely just letting people know, hey, um, I may be Hollywood, but I'm still going to be me at the end of the day, which is pretty good. And then going into the chorus, I like, uh, you know, it's kind of hard for me to, uh, differentiate if she's saying alive or if she's saying to life, to life, alive, alive, and, you know, with, with that voice when she sings. I mean, one well, one thing about her music I, I really like is, you know, not saying that it's 100% pop, you know, but she definitely did have that pop effect in, you know, a lot of her songs. Like like some of it's like hip hop and then some sometimes like during a song kind of feels like you're listening to a Katy Perry record if you know what I mean but I mean that's just <laughs> that's just me but <laughs> and then you know as for you know you know Drake did you know pretty good as well you know um let's see uh these other rappers getting bodied and carried away fuck it me and Nick Nicky Nick getting married today and you know they just like if you watch the videos like you know they yeah Drake Drake I mean, like I said, I can't look at him the same way, but you know, this, this song he kills it. He he just straight up kills it, at, <laughs> le at least to me. And then you know, you know, great great song. Still, this is I think the most uh, I listen to Nicki Minaj at least in terms of songs. I've I've heard this song a lot, and it's you know, I'm not even like at the point where it's like, hey, I'm sick of this song. I mean, it's still it's a pretty good song uh, for the most part. How do you feel about the song? Yeah, I, I used to really love this song uh, back when it came out and especially when uh, graduation time had came around for me. It was like my soundtrack for graduation. And I liked um, I liked I liked the way Drake ended it. He said, yeah. I really try to make it more than what it is because everybody mm -hmm. dies, but not everybody lives. Ah! And so I like I like how he did that. And I like how Nikki's um, just laying claim to everything, put it on everything, that I will retire with the ring and I mm. will retire with the crown. Yes. No, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. Yes. So I really like that. And I like when she say, this night just remind me of everything they deprive me of. Um, so I thought it was a really, really cool song. I like the music video. I music like how hard. <laughs> she's, she's kind of combining her whole, uh, she's got like the 
princess slash hip hop thing going here. Like, yeah. I'm I'm royalty, but I also got a lot of attitude. Don't worry about me. She's like in the video. She's like twisting her head in a princess outfit. Don't worry about me and who I fire. I get <laughs> I get what I desire. It's my empire. So I like that. And she meets her prince Drake, and mm-hmm. she's kind of just taking her victory rap, victory lap. Really, both her and Drake are. You know, she say yeah. clap for the heavyweight champ me. And I like how in the video, she's her own fairy godmother. Like she's off to the side, granting all her own wishes. Cause there were a lot of people um, just knowing her and having seen her interviews and stuff. There's a lot of people who try to lay claim to I made Nikki, I made Nikki. And she, she likes to say, no, I made me. So <laughs> I like how she made herself her own fairy godmother. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's totally awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a great song. Arguably the best. I think it's probably the best song on the whole album. Speaking of which, let's get into our favorites. What we think is the best, and you know, <laughs> we'll uh, discuss, dissect, and be- debate from there. So, I'll let you go first, as always. So, I gave an honorable mention to "Moment for Life" and "Roman's Revenge," but mm-hmm. the three that I picked were "Fly." Old Nikki and I'm the best. Oh, you like that first song, huh? All right, yeah, we're way off here. So, um, honorable mentions for me. Uh, here I am. Really, just like the whole second part of that whole album in general. I think you really get to see her like lyrical abilities and you know musical abilities as well. So, here I am. Honorable mention. But if I'm going with my three favorites. Uh, Roman's Revenge with Eminem. I thought she did a very good job there. Um, obviously, Moment for Life. I already, you probably already knew that was going to be one of my favorites. And then, last one I'm going with is the other single, Your Love. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think we're a little way off here. All right. So, what do you like about I'm the Best? I guess we could start with that one. Um, she she kind of started off the, the album with this and she's telling her story. It was back in 07, did a couple of tapes, mm-hmm. did a couple of DVDs, made a couple of mistakes. Didn't know what I was doing, but I put on a cape. Now it's yeah. which world war, sh- world tour should I go on and take? So I, I love that. She's just talking about all the people who doubted her. See, you told me I would lose, but I won. Um, and my one of my favorite parts, me and my friend used to say this all the time when this album came out. Uh, everything I tried to teach them, they gonna see it in time. Tell them bitches get a stick. I'm done leading the blind. <laughs> That's my part. Uh, I like um, verse two when she says, "I remember when I couldn't buy my mother a couch. Now I'm sitting at the closing, bought my mama a house." Mm-hmm. And you know, she later says, "I'm fighting for the girls that never thought they could win." Um, she feels like um, she was here to reverse the curse that the female rappers live in because. I think that at the time she came out, there was a huge uh, void in um, yeah. female rap. Uh, there was. Tr- Trina Trina is somebody who kind of consistently did rap for a long time, but she was never like just dominating the situation. Remy Ma, she was in it, but as soon as she was reaching the, the tipping point, she had to go to jail. And, mm. and Nikki came in and yeah. like, and she just blew everything away. So I yeah, like yeah. The thing is, yeah, it. with the there, there was a void. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You know, you had your '90 stars. Uh, you know, the brat had always been off and on. Foxy Brown, I don't think was doing much during that time, if she ever even came back. I mean, let's be real about it. And then, and then little Kim, you know, she's just been like kind of over the place as well. So I mean, it. Yeah. So I mean, I think she did come in. She just filled in that void where, I mean, I mean, let's be real. I mean, no disrespect to anyone that came before, but I mean, if you were like a kid during this time and, you know, if you don't go back through your history, it's, you, it's hard to give like some of these, uh, you know, female rappers that came before their flowers. I mean, unless you know, like the real popular ones, like Queen Latifah, Salt and Pepper, you know, those, and it's just like, like, I, I'm, yeah. So it's, there, there was a big void. I mean, <laughs> Not not gonna lie to you about that. <laughs> yeah, so you know, she she's just talking about how she wants to she wants to save female rap and 
I've heard her say that in her mm. in her mixtape before. She say, "Write it down, take a picture, bitches, email that." I came to save a thing called female rap. Mm. So, I mean, you you could argue that that she did it. Yeah. So I, I like that song. Yeah, it's it's a good song. Definitely like the her, like how she tells her story and that uh, you know back in all seven what she was doing and you now just uh, what she's doing now. You know, just hey, can't afford to get my mom on the couch now. You know. She bought her a house and, you know, just doing all these other great luxurious things. So definitely uh, she has a real rags to riches story, I can safely say. <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure. And then uh, what was your what were your other picks? Oh, Nikki and Fly. Fly. Uh, what do you like about Fly? What'd you... So we already talked about Oh, Fly, yeah, that's right. You're the already... one with Rihanna. Yeah, yeah, that was, oh, yeah, just. Brain fart. Uh, dear old Nikki, what would you like about that one? I like that one because it was it was just really off the beaten path when it comes to rap. Mm-hmm. Um, when she's just talking about how much she's changed. Usually, you would hear this uh, as like a criticism from the fans, like, "Man, I miss the old Nikki." But she just takes it upon herself to self to cr- critique. She says. Mm-hmm. Did I chase the glisten, glamour, money, fame, and power? Because if so, that will forever go down my lamest hour. <laughs> and she's just talking to herself, uh, telling herself why she changed. But she seems to be unable to summon her old self. Yeah. And she's like saying, you was the brave heart. You stole Wayne heart. You never <laughs> switched it up. You played the same part. And then she's trying to reason and rationalize and explain why she had to change but I needed to grow and I needed to know where there's some things inside of me that I needed to show. So I just deaded you, left you yeah. all black. Dear old Nikki, please call back. So I, I really liked it. Um, and at the end when she's saying, you was underground and I was mainstream. I lived the night life now that we would daydream. And she, she just really wishes that this old Nikki would come and enjoy it with her. Uh, but she can't seem to to summon her anymore. So it's kind yeah. it's kind of a bittersweet song. Like she made it, but she feels like she's missing a particular part of herself. So I thought it was a very unique song. I thought it was very well put together. That's why it's one of my favorite songs on the album. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Very good analogy on that. All right, I'll get into mine. So Nicki Minaj, uh, Roman's Revenge with Eminem. Uh, I like how she starts off the song, I am not Jasmine, I am a Latin, so far ahead of these bums is lagging, see me in that new thing, bums is gagging, I'm starting to feel like a dungeon dragon, raw like a dungeon dragon, I'm starting to feel like a dungeon, like, I like how she gets into her, like, her like little like fantasy mode in the time, and I think that's what really attracts me about Nicki Minaj is when, you know, she does like, you know, said does stuff like raw raw like a dungeon dragon. I mean, too bad there wasn't a video for this. Oh, man, I think it would have been off the chain. And then, you know, Eminem, he came in, he did his thing. You know, nothing really lyrically from Eminem that stood out, but I just I just really like the whole Dungeon Dragon. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was just uh, really, <laughs> really, really, really cool. Um, uh, anything in this song that stands out to you? Or... Yes. Uh, one thing I, I really never liked about how Nikki handles her beefs is like mm-hmm. every time she does a, a beef response, she always puts somebody else on the song. Like she did this when she was responding to Remy. She put mm-hmm. Wayne and Drake on it. And on this one, you know, her first response, she put Eminem on it. Uh, I, I like how Eminem kind of acknowledges how odd this pairing is. He says, yeah. Shady and Nicki Minaj, you might, you might find the site quite odd, but don't <laughs> ask why, bitch. Ask why not. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. <laughs> I like I like Nikki's first verse to um, look at my show footage how these girls be spazzing so fuck I look like getting back to a has been yeah I said it <laughs> has been hang it up flat screen so I like that there's this one part uh, I had looked up way back then because I was like what is a fra- fraggle rock she calls Lil Kim a fraggle rock she says fraggle you rock. little fraggle rock I'll beat that, you with a like paddle that old, like that old show fraggle rock yeah, which I I had no idea what it was. Yeah, it was, was a it. yeah, I think Jim Henson, Fraggle Rock. Yeah, yeah, like they look like the Muppet Babies. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah, or the Muppet. <laughs> yeah, 
Frag, yeah, Fraggle Rock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah that, that's real old. <laughs> so you Googled it back it was, then. <laughs> yeah, I Googled it. I'm like, what the hell is she calling her? But yeah. yeah, she called her a Fraggle Rock. I thought that was really funny. And when she says, you out of work, I know it's tough, but enough is enough. <laughs> like I did so yeah, she 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 ate her alive one day. Kim Kim came back uh, with yeah. uh, Black Friday. She said uh, she turned in Pink Friday to Friday the thirteenth. Uh, so it was a really good uh, battle. I, I really like this, but Nikki really did good on this one. And adding M- <laughs> Eminem to it was yeah. like random as fuck, but it made it a harder of a song. <laughs> yeah, def- definitely. Um, yeah, so, yeah, he did, yeah, it hadn't ended, well, I hadn't ended in any song, like, during that time period, you know, I mean, you were gonna get, get, definitely get a lot of attention, you know, whether it was a good pairing or not, I mean, it's Eminem, I mean, who wouldn't want to do a song with Eminem? <laughs> yeah, you, you can't say no. Yeah. yeah. And then your love, um, I just like the love story in this one, I don't know what it was, um, well, the beat, I think, is what, uh, really drew me in, and then, you know, definitely, uh. You know, the chorus, Shadi, I'ma only tell you this once. Yeah, you the illest. Um, and for you, your loving, I'ma die hard like Bruce Willis. You got spark, you got you you got spunk, yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, I like how it you know starts out and then um you know, definitely with the second uh verse, um, you know, definitely uh when she goes to the park. Anyway, I think I met him in the sky when I was uh Gisha, he was a samurai. Somehow I understood him when he spoke Thai. Never spoke lies, and he never broke flies. So I thought that was... And then, oh yeah, how she keeps going. That's on my chest. Let, let me get my cape on. He's so thugged out. Ghostface and Ray, Raekwon. Convict just like Akon. Yeah, I thought, I thought that last part there went pretty hard. And music video, you know, definitely... I'm. I mean, look like the karate in the beginning, and then you know the whole like samurai uh, thing. I'm into like those like Japanese samurai kind of games, like uh, like you know, I can't think of any at the moment, but yeah, you know, just uh, I thought that was pretty. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool how how they did all that. I thought it was the video was very creative, and you know, the song you know very creative too. You know, with the whole like love story and everything. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima. You know, I'm thinking of something like like Ghost of Tsushima. Kind of, what which is a game I played recently. But yeah. You know, so, what were your thoughts on uh, <laughs> on this so, one? Uh, I, I was expecting you to like uh, Roman's Revenge. I wasn't expecting you to like this one uh, the best. <laughs> but it, it, it was a pretty it was a pretty good song. Shawty, I'm only tell you this once. You the illest. Do it. <laughs> It was a pretty. I good surprised song you with some of these picks, huh? I surpri- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this one was definitely surprising, um, <laughs> but it definitely showed like Nicki Minaj has so many sides. She yeah. has the, she does the. I don't know what to call it without being offensive, but the Asian, the Asian thing. She likes the the Asian mm. stuff. She likes mm. Princess Barbie stuff. She likes hip hop. Um, she likes this uh, this alter ego she has on Roman's Revenge, Roman, yeah. uh, just going crazy. She likes talking in a British accent. She's just a very uh, <laughs> worldly <laughs> person, I guess you could say. She did go to, she went to art school, and yeah. you could tell that uh, in the songs, and you could tell it in the, the videos when she's acting. It's, what song was that? I think it was the one... Mm. Uh, you see right through me when she's oh yeah acting. see right she's a, she's a really good actress yeah she is yeah that was a good that was a good video not my favorite song but the video was real really one of the better videos from yeah. from all the music videos that she has <laughs> speaking of which you know let's uh move on so album cuts and expansion so there was a deluxe edition and then a complete edition so if you're watching this, if you're wondering why we didn't do Super Bass, it was on the Deluxe and Complete Editions. Usually we just try to do the bass album unless it's like some other circumstances. Like I know a few episodes back when we did Above the Rim, we did the whole edition because even though the three last songs from that one were cut off the CD, everything was on the tape. So, And the music was throughout the movie too. So that was a different story with it being a soundtrack and all. But um, so... The deluxe edition, complete edition, and with that came two more singles. Besides Super Bass, you also 
got uh, Girls Fall Like Dominoes. And there is a video for Super Bass. Pretty, pretty freaky video, if you ask me. I actually did get a chance to see it. <laughs> good song, too. It was actually a pretty good song. But any thoughts on that or the Complete Edition or Deluxe Edition? Which one do you have back yeah. in the day? I, I, I wasn't really a fan of the Super Bass song uh, hmm. back in the day. It was a little too, I guess poppy for lack of better terms for me it was a little freaky uh, it was a bit poppy too i see why it was left off the bass album because it, it definitely that's where you get then to the part where it's just like all right is this is this a rap video or a pop video like yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i wonder what it's listed as on spotify on on apple it says r&b slash what does it say it says r&b slash i could tell you on spotify of all the listens, it is the most popular song. Surprisingly, Super Bass was the most popular song. So, yeah. So I had to give it a listen, and then didn't really get a chance to listen to much else. I know Roman's Revenge. There's a version uh, with Little Wayne instead of Eminem. Uh, Catch me, wave your hand, or other songs. And then there's another song called Bedrock with uh, Young Money and Lloyd. So just. So, if you guys want to check it out, a complete edition. It's available Apple Music, Spotify. If you want to check that out, um, did you have this on CD back in the day? I'm I'm just curious. Or did you just I listen? I don't think so. I had a i I had an iPhone by then. Okay, so you just listen to it digitally, probably. Okay, no worries. Yeah. All right, so so yeah, so knock yourself out. You know, more music be up behind this album here. At least behind the 13 bass tracks. Uh, for recommendations, so we're getting a two right now. Eminem's Recovery. I didn't list this one on the outline, but I'm also going to shout out Drake's uh, Thank Me Later. That also came out in 2010. It came out around the same time Eminem's Recovery came out. So uh, that summer was pretty star studded with you know those two. And then Rihanna's Loud came out that month. In November, and then the same day, Kanye West's "My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy" came out. So, there are some recommendations for you guys um, if you guys want to listen to some of the other artists uh, that were on this album. All right, so I've gone over a little forty minutes here, so let's uh, get our closing thoughts in and put this one in the books. Uh, taking any of these songs back to your playlist, uh, looking at, at it in a whole new light. What are your final thoughts? Um. I'm probably not gonna take anything back to the playlist. Everything I I like, I already I already really liked. Uh, mm. We'll keep we'll keep listening to old Nikki for sure. <laughs> Even though she had to change between you know the the mixtape Nikki was definitely a lot different than the debut album Nikki. But the debut album Nikki has such wide appeal. That's why you know a song like Super Bass was gonna do tremendous. She yeah. had to turn on something else inside of her to 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 blow up like that so i thought it was a pretty good album i I would recommend it yeah i'll definitely recommend it too um definitely my three top picks i would take back along with here i am i thought here i am was a really good song just not enough to crack my favorites um she definitely knows how to market herself even back then you know as a newcomer in the game she knows how to market herself and you know i gotta give her you know, utmost respect. I definitely want to give this album her her, her flowers. Mickey Minaj, you know, hats off to you for making a great album. One of the best in hip hop. You know, regardless of if you think it's a pop album or not. So, <laughs> yeah, def- definitely great. And you know, I'm glad we did it. So, those are my final thoughts. And we want to know your final thoughts. Uh, what are your favorite tracks? Anything we missed? Anything? Um, anything you disagree with on us? Leave it. A- for us in the comments, for Netta, aka Wondrous Net, I'm Justin, too tall for you fool, saying thank you for watching, thank you for listening. We will see you on the next one. Later.